Let us discuss which organelles are involved in synthesis, modification of various molecules and also in the transport. Let's start with the cell nucleus, which is surrounded by a nuclear envelope. There's two membranes and the microscopic pores. The outer nuclear mem membrane being continuous with the membranes of endoplasmic reticulum, which is a system of hollow cisterns. Which usually surround the perinuclear region. There are ribosomes on the surface of that granular endoplasmic reticulum. That's where the translation of proteins occurs, right? And we got some transport vesicles that pass from the endoplasmic reticulum to the Golgi complex, which has two faces. The one that is diverted to the endoplasmic reticulum is the cis, while the opposite facing the cell surface is a trans, and that's where the transport vesicles are formed and they go to the cell membrane where they undergo exocytosis for example. So that's a simplified version of that process. Let's discuss the, the contribution of these organelles. So we have the inner and outer nuclear membrane with pores. There is a perinuclear play, a perinuclear space in between. And this is continuous with the inner space of the endoplasmic reticulum. which has on its surface ribosomes and together that's called granular or rough endoplasmic reticulum. We got transport vesicles uh, joining the cis phase of the Golgi complex while the other, the opposite phase, is called trans, trans, and that's where the transport vesicles come from. That eventually undergo exocytosis of their content. So, I will neglect part of the biological function and only focusing on what's important for histology in this context. So in the, uh, the rough endoplasmic reticulum we got, we got newly, synthetized, newly synthetized proteins that have been, that underwent uh, translation Of, uh, in the ribosomes so uh, there are some minor changes of the uh, newly formed um, protein molecules in the granular endoplasmic reticulum and some modifications to the to the structure 
rich and well-developed granular mm -hmm. endoplasmic microreticulum occurs uh, in cells that are specialized for producing uh, proteins such as plasma cells that are producing immunoglobulins, fibroblasts that are cells producing uh, large amounts of extracellular matrix in connected tissues or serous uh, glands, epithelium of serous glands. Uh, cells with rich and rough endoplasmic reticulum are usually basophilic and the basophilia is due to the ribosomes that are made of nucleic acid standing uh, in the basophilic way. The granular endoplasmic reticulum in neurons is also known as the nissels or tigroid substance. It's the same. There is also smooth or agranular endoplasmic reticulum without the ribosomes. It's, res it, it's responsible for synthesis of phospholipids that are necessary for formation of new membranes made of phospholipids actually lipoproteins and similar also formation of steroid hormones and biotransformation of xenobiotics. The xenobiotics are actually substances coming out from outside the body. It could be even drugs prescribed by doctors. Mo uh, there are more multiple mechanisms of the biotransformation uh, such as conjugation and various modifications uh, leading to increasing the uh, the hydrophilic properties so the substances could be eliminated from the body via uh, via glomerular filtration in the kidney. In smooth, uh, sorry, in uh, uh, skeletal muscle fibers and in cardiac muscle cells it's called sarcoplasmic reticulum and it serves as a reservoir of calcium ions that are sequestrated there but upon some stimulus uh, they are released to trigger the contraction. This biotransformation occurs for example in liver cells namely the epithelial liver cells called hepatocytes. So they have very rich, smooth uh, endoplasmic reticulum and uh, which cells are producing steroid hormones, for example, lytic cells of testis or adrenal cortex and more. Let's discuss the contribution of the Golgi complex uh, that's where some post-translation modifications occur because most of the proteins, of the newly formed proteins, need to be modified somehow like glycosylation, sulfatation, a partial proteolysis, etc. Also there is formation of vesicles and uh, the vesicles are getting some special addressing molecules uh, and uh, the formation of vesicles is also called coating because there are coats made of uh, various uh, molecules and the uh, vesicles could be either intended for intracellular 
transport or for exocytosis. And the secretory vesicles are transferred, uh, are using cytoskeleton for transfer. Well, one of the examples could be microtubules. Microtubules are rigid components of cytoskeleton made of polymerized units of tubulin. They have a plus end work, they can grow, they have a minus end with a depolymerize. And in cells they are used like a railroads for transport. And we got molecular motors responsible for the transport such as dynane or kinesin. They are transporting the vesicles to their addresses. So, transport vesicles that are here released from the trans phase of the Golgi complex and the molecular motors such as the dynane or kinesin transporting in opposite directions using the microtubules as railroads. Let's also mention, mention uh, other organelles such as lysosomes. Lysosomes actually originate uh, on, the, on the Golgi complex. The, these are membrane-bound organelles that contain various enzyme complexes, and proteins, cofactors, etc. And the primary lysosomes, they originate, they are released from the Golgi complex. So they originate complex. So they got their enzymes inside. There's a whole variety of enzymes that could be included. They're loaded with enzymes. But there is no substrate. Yeah, so they are waiting. They can then fuse with other organelles, particles, molecules coming from inside cell of the cell. That's what we call them autolysosomes. So they become secondary lysosomes, which could be autolysosomes. Uh, responsible for ingestion of uh, and degradation of molecules coming from inside a cell, or they can fuse with phag phagosomes uh, containing particles and substances coming from outside a cell. That's why you call it phagolysosome. And we got also some tertiary lysosomes, which are like residual bodies. After this uh, digestion, intracellular digestion, and these could be either excluded or stored. Let me also mention the peroxisomes. Sorry. Peroxisomes. They can also contain a whole variety of enzymes such as oxidases, catalases, and more. And they are important, they are involved in alpha or beta. Oxidation of carboxy 
assets including fatty acids uh, they are involved in the synthesis of cholesterol which moreover is a precursor of uh, synthesis of steroid hormones also also bile acids um, they are used for removing of reactive oxygen species which are highly reactive forms of oxygen such as such as uh, superoxide or peroxide particles and uh, the composite they, they decompose uh, molecules such as purines polyamines and amino acids but you would need uh, usually electron microscopes to be able to study uh, lysosomes and peroxisomes uh, they are especially well developed in uh, macrophages, for example, yeah, in phagocytes.